unwanted distortion or clipping will ruin your song or beat pretty quickly. If you want to avoid this problem, this is the video to watch. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to fix clipping and prevent any clipping issues in the first place. So let's get into it. Best way to prevent clipping is to start by mixing your tracks very low. For example, I usually have my melodies under minus 14 dB and my drums under minus 9 dB. This usually gives my tracks enough headroom for when I add my master effects. So for example, let's turn off my master effects right now and then let's play back some melody over here. So if we go to my master track, you'll see that we're under minus 15 dB even with the drums and the melodies, okay? Then when the 808 comes in, it's hitting around nine, max, minus nine, max. We don't want it to go over there. But really the most important part is to go to the chorus where everything's hitting so we can see where the kick and the 808 is hitting. And as you can see, far too high. Usually minus six is okay, but as you can hear, there is some distortion, there is some clipping going on, but honestly, that was on purpose so that we could fix it and I could show you how to do that, which I'll be doing in the later steps in this video. But even when I do have the drums at minus nine, for example, the kick and the 808 is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the drums. That's where we want to hit minus nine and no more, no further than that. And when I have my melodies under minus 14, there is still some chance that there can be clipping and there can be distortion issues. And when that happens, we move on to the next step. Step number two is finding the culprit that's making your beat clip. For me, it's usually the 808 or kick because my melodies are mixed very, very low. So there's usually no chance of those clipping or giving me any distortion. If we listen through to this beat, in order to find the culprit, we basically wanna turn off elements and see if the distortion sticks around. Usually the distortion will come in when I add my master effects. So let's bring on my master effects so we can hear everything louder and a whole lot more clearer. So in the chorus, as you can hear, distortion. especially when the 808 is hitting a higher note. So let's turn off the 808 and see if there's still distortion with just the kick. So as you can hear, no distortion. So the culprit is the 808. So we're going to need to lower the volume of the 808 to make sure that it's not giving us distortion. But I'd also lower the volume of the kick as well, because if we come over here and we turn off the master effects, I'm pretty sure, yeah, the kick is hitting above minus nine. Definitely don't want that. With the kick and the 808 together, they kind I kind of look at them as like one cohesive unit. Of course, they're two separate tracks, but they work in tandem together. So I want to listen to my track where the kick and the 808 is hitting at the same time so that those work very well with each other and when they're hitting at the same time, they're not causing distortion issues. Because if you listen to the 808 by itself, it might not have any distortion. Then you bring in the kick and then it just boosts everything to another level and then you've got distortion. Same vice versa, you might listen to the kick, no distortion, then you add the 808, then it starts bringing in distortion. So those need to be mixed together. And I'm gonna show you how to get rid of the clipping and distortion in the next step. But before we get into that, if you want your beats half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage, you can grab my beat mixing template. This is my pop trap loop mixing template that I'm using currently now. And you can grab that in the link down below or go to jcarterray.com forward slash FL templates. This will have your beat half mixed before you even get to the mixing stage. It's gonna save you a bunch of time. It's gonna give you a bunch of the effects that you really need to use to mix your beat and have it sound a professional. So if you want more professional sounding beats, you wanna spend less time mixing your beats, you wanna learn how to mix your beats and have them sounding better, this is the perfect template for you, link down below. Next step. So the next step is we found our culprit, we noticed the 808, now it's time to lower the volume of the 808. So as I said, we want our 808 and kick 
to be hitting at minus nine and nowhere above it. So first of all, I'll turn off the kick and we'll see what's going on with the AOA and where that's hitting. Now it's actually hitting under nine, but I can hear the distortion. So let's just bring this back to about there. As you can hear, no distortion. And then if we add the kick, let's see where it's hitting. I think when we had the kick by itself, it was already hitting over minus nine. So we'll bring this back a little bit and then see if both of them together is hitting at minus nine or more. So it's all under minus nine. At this point, I can turn on my master effects and listen back and see if there's any distortion. Honestly, it might be able to push the kick a little bit more. Then that's that. And then the next step is to check the master volume again to check if the B is clipping. Now, because I have a limiter on my master track, it's actually not gonna go over minus three. So we're not gonna be able to clearly see if it's clipping. But if we turn that off, if it's over nine, then we know we've got some issues. Cause that's generally, like the reason why I'm saying minus nine is because generally when my kick and 808 together are hitting over minus nine, I'll find myself having distortion issues when I add my master channel with my limiter and all that sort of stuff and the maximizer because I won't have any headroom to actually boost the track. And if I do try to boost it to any length, I'll generally get some clipping, get some distortion. And that's generally what we're trying to avoid. So if it's not gonna clip because we got the limiter on regardless and because we're mixing it so low, it's just not gonna happen but it, it would be the maximizer and this sort of stuff that would start to make a clip. Like if I brought the threshold down, then it will, be, it will become louder and louder and it wouldn't actually clip in the DAW, but we'd hear the distortion that would really not sound nice. So these are a few elements that you can change around the threshold on your limiter, the ceiling. Audio is the first thing that you should be dealing with, like the 808 and that sort of stuff, because the 808 and the kick is usually gonna be your main culprits. So deal with that first, then you can deal with the processing to try and get rid of the distortion from there. If there's still distortion after you've like really lowered your kick and 808, if it's, if it's at like minus 12 and you're still getting distortion, then you should probably go into the processor. But before that, turn off the processor and make sure that it's below minus nine. I would even go to minus 12 if you need to push it there. And then when you add the processing, you should not get distortion if you've done everything right. So that's that. That's how you fix beat clipping and beat distortion for your beats. If you've got any questions or any other tutorials you want me to make, let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to check out the description. Loads of helpful links in there. Check out that video next and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.